But um, anyway, so yes, I went to uh, Brno, uh, which is in the Czech Republic. Is that focused? Anyway, that's where the Czech Republic is, just in case people... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Brno is the second city in the Czech Republic, down in the south. Um, quite big and nice and cheerful, but it snowed at the time. Anyway, um, so uh, 31st of March to 6th of April, which meant it was Easter, I arrived on... Easter uh, day and therefore took part in some of the uh, festivities which I'll show you in a minute. So just an overview of the five day visit, what did I do? Why did I get money from the European Commission for five days in the Czech Republic? Well, Monday was Easter Monday, so I visited the Brnach in Tehran, some South Moravian villages, tasted some wine, uh, and was involved in Easter traditions. Not very university related, but what did you Give us funding for this? Yes, yes, you can. And this is why everyone should try it sometimes. Um, uh, from that point on, though, it was very intense and you know, work related. So Tuesday, met the vice head of the Math MU is M M uh, Masaryk University Language Centre, lunch, visited the law faculty, and observed lessons in the law faculty. Uh, Wednesday, again, law faculty, because I teach in the law faculty here, so uh, it was mainly on that. Met colleagues there, observed other lessons at different levels, um, and was invited to a research seminar on TBTL, task based teaching and learning, which I'll talk a bit more about if we have time, uh, at the Masaryk University Language Centre. Um, Thursday, uh, which was yes, day four or five, um, Massive University have benefited from uh, a lot of uh, European Union funding, and they've built themselves, and Czech Republic government as well, they've built themselves a nice brand new uh, campus, called Nietzsche Campus. Uh, so I went to visit that, I mean, we can have a virtual tour if we want. Uh, internet connection, I don't know, do we? It comes and goes, so we might not have a virtual tour. Um, okay, and uh, in the afternoon on that day, I got uh, taken, kidnapped basically, um, to go and do some Erasmus in the community. That is, I went and uh, helped out in some kindergartens and evening yeah. classes. I did, yes, yes, indeed. That's all part of the European project. Uh, in Moravian villages, places you absolutely would not see if you went as a tourist or even as a, as a you know, city to city professional. So that was very interesting. Um, and on the last day then I co-taught, which is a new experience, co-teaching, you know, two presenters at once, um, which is very enriching at the economics faculty, so that was bringing the business aspect of my teaching uh, load here. And then visited the UNESCO World Heritage Site, <coughs> uh, Villa Kugendat, is an architectural gem in Brno, which we might um, talk about in a minute if we have to if you're interested. And then went to traditional music and dance. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Just to round it off, oh. they drink a lot in Czech Republic. Yes, <laughs> you have to show cultural awareness and adaptability. You have to show that you can drink as well. So, this was the Easter Monday traditions young men chasing young women with skins. That's tradition, of course. <laughs> this is the Easter Monday tradition. It's obviously pagan related. This is a stick. It's a. Uh, uh, <laughs> It's woven from a young branch, or young branches of a willow tree. It's a fertility symbol. And young men chase the young women, and they're supposed to like, uh, you know, take swipes at them, and therefore sort of symbolically fertilise it. This is the Easter tradition. This is part of cultural exchange, okay? And it's very low tech. And it's, so Easter whipping for the. This is the place. Um, this is the village that I, I spent some time in, south of Brno. Um, very difficult to pronounce. <laughs> <laughs> um, the town rests kind of between the, the, the centre and the front of the upper palette. Um, it's kind of between a and a r, so between a, a Dutch G and an Italian R. Can, can you try that? Yeah, no. And I couldn't get after five days of trying and and <coughs> I just couldn't get it. Anyway. Um, the stick, by the way, is called a, a pom pomlaska, okay? And I have one at home. <laughs> not tell me you're I'm not more, more babies in the department. No, no, I was, I was given one. What you're supposed to do with the woven stick afterwards is stick it in some damp earth. And? <laughs> Sorry, Terry. And? And it grows, it grows, and it's grown, so it's a tree. Oh, 
So it's a nice no, woven no, tree. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. <laughs> this is what happens when the girls get caught. Oh, oh, oh my God! God. <laughs> but, yeah, sorry, we'll be, uh, uh, but after midday, the girls can then throw cold water over the, the men. Okay, so no, 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 no. After midday. This is an example of task-based teaching and learning. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to give you one. I can't okay. do that in class, yeah. <laughs> okay, so things got a bit more serious after that, and I went to visit the university on uh, day two, um, meeting the, the vice head of the department, Hanna Katunyakova. Um, and the colleague who actually came to the CIDRV last year, Eva Tombeshova. Um, that's the proof that I was there. <laughs> Not a, a, a montage. No. Um, what a show. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, um, I'll talk a little bit about video conferencing now, because this is one of the things that was uh, a strong point that uh, Massive University will let's say aiming to promote to me when I was there because there's a can you take one across that um, video conferencing quick guide and video conferencing for students of law. There are two um, photocopies. Basically um, Massive University Language Center recently installed uh, a video conferencing suite which is especially geared you know, this classroom wouldn't do, for example, for video conferencing. Too much light, too many kind of hard objects, not enough sound absorption. Uh, installed recently thanks to European Social Fund project funding, um, and it's exploited in the context of a three-way agreement currently, and they're looking for other partners, of which we could potentially be one, uh, University of Helsinki and Abrisgeth, which is in Wales. Wales. Um, and one particular um, module they talked to me about was video conferencing in law, which is uh, credited with European Credit Transfer System credits um, and caters for uh, a group of law students who opt to take this course in turn for five ECTS. Um, what do they do in these video conference encounters with their peers in Helsinki and Aboristas, well they have simulation meetings, they have conferences, moot courts, mock trials and so on. This is all part of the task-based teaching and learning that is sort of their um, philosophy in Massive University. So um, preparing these things and going through these um, video conference meetings. Uh, obviously, video conferencing requires a lot of input from all sides. If we wanted to set up the video <coughs> conferencing suite and modules and so on uh, in the CIDL view, it, it would require a lot of input from all sides. Um, and it's restricted to small groups only. You can't have a group of 20 students and mm -hmm. manage in an efficient way a video conferencing session. It's, you know, eight, nine students plus an animator um, in each place. And, and there are other factors to be taken into account too. Um, obviously, it has to be exploited, it can't just be exploited by, for example, the English core teachers, it has to be available for the other language teachers, so, um, I don't know, do we have anything like this here at the moment? We have any. Video conferencing <coughs> suite or modules used by language, um, no, I know there is a video conferencing suite over in, who, no? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> But we don't use it for no, language no, no, task-based uh, no, learning. Could, no, so it's something we could think about. Um, so stru structure and setup of VT suite is, as you see, it's very linear here. Yeah. Sorry. Um, the the suite itself has to be geared to minimise outside light, uh, outside noise interference, so soundproofing, a bit like a TV mm -hmm. studio, really. Mm -hmm. um, you know, blinds like this just wouldn't do it at all. Um, Sober colours, okay, it's, well. <laughs> Mainly blue, in fact. Dark blue is a good colour for uh, uh, a video conference. And students are advised on dress. So, you know, their, their teacher or instructor will say, you know, next week we're having a session with Bristol. So come in wearing dark green or, you know, dark blue. Take off your shiny jewellery. Uh, you know, don't wear anything flashy. Don't wear stripes. Don't wear, you know, pop-top mm -hmm. t-shirts or whatever. Okay. Um, 
and uh, the furniture even is something to take into account. The tables should be arranged like in a in a you know a, a triangular uh, formation with the apex at the front, so that everyone there can see the screen, and everyone who's the other side of the screen can see everyone you. Um, okay. Uh, you obviously have to have the technology present to film while you're being filmed too, okay? <coughs> um, and to, to, to project your images. And uh, you also have to have a document reader, which is uh, usually situated on the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not quite how it works, but it sort of rotates and it can, like, you know, go and look down on what each participant has in front of them, okay? So mm -hmm. if Nathan wants to show us. Um, a graph that she's got in her textbook, uh, the document reader mm -hmm. will be able to read that and project that to our mm -hmm. in, I think, in our business. Um, okay, so te technological mm -hmm. input is, is you know, there needs to be quite a, a lot of it. Um, pros and cons, just briefly, in setting up a suite. So uh, it's one of Master University strengths where they're trying to promote it, that's why they're looking for partners and we could be one of them. Uh, it's a highly motivating task, <coughs> authentic learning environment. Okay, you come into contact with strangers, uh, you talk about content topic you're, you're learning, <coughs> and it's a very real situation, if you think of a mock trial or a moot court or, or a conference or, or something. Yes, it's a simulation, but uh, you know, it's as real as it can be. Um, so viability and impact are clearly things that have to be studied. Uh, it's a considerable investment. Massive University got uh, most of the funding from the European Social Fund. Um, <coughs> that's why they're doing what they can to promote it uh, you know, with other universities, partners, and, and looking for Erasmus things and so on. Um, Timetabling. Coordination has to be impeccable, okay? So you have to set up your timetable precisely with your group in Helsinki or group in Abruzzo or group in Brussels or, or, or wherever it may be. And you know, you can imagine how impeccable that has to be and how complicated it is to be that impeccable. Uh, because you've got stakeholders in the institutions, instructors, technicians, uh, students, and so on. Uh, you have to have good technical support, you know, so people like you and uh, that present all the time. Uh, <laughs> you also have to have sorry, teachers. So uh, you know, yeah. who can maybe go beyond the linear PowerPoint retro style <laughs> presentation? Um, <coughs> calm down, Andrew. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, but I'm yeah, don't worry. Um, okay, and then you have to have your space identified that uh, needs to be set up sufficiently. Uh, you know, kept in optimum condition and so on. Okay, you also can't have lazy passive students. You have to have students who are willing to put in the time, do their homework in advance, and come prepared and not just come saying, "Oh, well, you know, I just wanted to sit and watch today," or you know, oh, "I thought it was for tomorrow." Or, no, it doesn't work. It just it, everything would just crumble. So, like I said, a lot of uh, stakeholders, <coughs> a lot of investment of time, money, and, yeah. and so on. Um, and clearly, it has to be accessible to different language combinations. And you have to, to make it viable, you have to have your partners in place. You can't just say, oh, we've got a lovely brand new video conferencing suite. Um, who are we going to use it with? <laughs> with ourselves or what? Okay, so we, we have to set up our kind of network of partners in advance. Um, for that to work, we might have to set up, one might have to set up new modules to be able to offer to students. Okay? It's difficult to integrate into a pre-existing up and running course. Okay. Finally, all teachers and decision makers have to be fully behind such a project. Yeah. So enough on that. Um, and I'll talk more about technology in the classroom in the context of class observations and teaching. Just briefly, one other thing that I met in my travels in the Czech Republic was a flip camera. Um, do we know what a flip camera is? Because I've never used one, and they talk, uh, my colleagues there spoke to me about the flip camera as if it was something that everyone should have, uh, you know, like a mobile phone or um, uh, Not a device I was unfamiliar with, and clearly a step forward from the dictaphone. Oh, the and then that you're familiar with, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a, a flip camera, and it's a tiny device, a bit like the MP3 recorders we use in the oral exams. Yeah. It's that big. 
And basically, it, it films the students. It doesn't have a, 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 a disc or anything inside it. It memorizes and then it plays back immediately and then it's wiped off. Um, so flip video cameras, take this camcorders for digital video. And they use for filming, a bit like Terry I saw you last year with the, the doctoral courses, mm -hmm. carting the thing upstairs. Uh, for your PhD students, yeah. so you, you film them and then play it back so they see how they're doing. Yeah. So the students can observe themselves immediately, you know, straight after they've done a five minute presentation, mm -hmm. and immediately work on um, their errors, their pronunciation, their posture, uh, hand movement, and you know, all the mistakes that I'm probably making right now. Um, so that's why a flip camera is useful, and it's made by. No, it's made by. Um... Good guess. No, it's a, I think it's a French, um... Yeah, look, it's, um... I don't know, maybe. Um, <coughs> if you put it in, um, Wikipedia, it'll give you everything you need to know. Okay? So, what it does is it... But it, it, it stores the, 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 the thing you've, you know... Yeah. You film, your student's doing a presentation. And it stores um, it on and, the camera you film, somewhere. And it stores it, yeah, the memory yeah. in the camera. And can you then that, um, uh, put it on your computer afterwards? Uh, yes, possible? I think you can then you can, sort of you can plug it in and a bit like, yeah. Use your stick. Yeah, oh, lovely. Access thing. You can Very nice. Um, and basically play it back into the student, give mm -hmm. them feedback yeah. while mm -hmm. looking, you know, rather than just giving them the paper papers yeah. that we do. And you say, well, you know, here, look what you're doing there, and uh, you shouldn't be in a standing like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then maybe they would believe you if you say so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more, it makes the whole thing a bit more um, real, yes. more authentic, a bit more convincing. Mm -hmm. So none of us have ever used one of these movies now. You can do basically the same with a camera from an iPhone or yeah, an sure. iPad. Yeah, yeah. The same idea, the same thing, that's just. Yeah, okay. Yes. But I didn't get to see it in use because this, uh, this actually has a screen on it that you can then. It has a little screen on the back, yeah. So it's like you're saying it's, it's the same like a smartphone. Yeah, yeah, if you have a smartphone, you. Oh, fuck. What are you talking about? A smartphone camera. <laughs> this uh, only does that, though. It doesn't. Uh, you can't. 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 Yeah, can Maybe you project it's been discontinued. Alan is asking, can you project it on the computer? Immediately. Maybe immediately after you link it on the bigger, if you connect it to your computer, it's possible, I guess. If there is a real one. No, that's a point. Yes, it does appear to have this big lens, so maybe you can project it. Yeah, I think you're right. I think that's probably it. Yeah, there must be yeah. something else going on. There must be something else going on. Yeah, I need your help here. I, I only went so far in my <laughs> It was only one aspect. break my <laughs> Canon. <laughs> camera, 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 not Canon. Dude. Okay, so that was one uh, interesting thing. The flip camera. The flip camera. <laughs> okay, so Tuesday afternoon, day two, I observed Dr. Stjepanka Milova teaching uh, English for uh, students of law uh, in their final semester over a two-year study of English. Because their cycle of English study is four semesters long. They start at the beginning of the first year, so they do semester one, semester two in first year, and semester three, semester four in the second year of their bachelor level degree. And they are aiming for B2 across the board in all subjects. How many hours do they get? Four hours per week, I understand. Yeah. And so they don't... Basically the double of what students that we have are trying, when they're trying to get to B2. Because we have two hours a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <coughs> that's right. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, and they don't have any final exams. Well, they don't have a final exam each year. They have a final exam at the end of the four semesters. Mm -hmm. And then they have what's called a credit test at the end of each semester. They don't have obligatory attendance, I found this very interesting. Um, however, they do have to pass each credit test for permission to proceed. So if they don't pass the test in semester one, that's it. They've you know, forfeit their English studies. If they don't get to the final exam. Okay, so that's the 
the motivating factor that keeps them. So they don't actually the grease it. They don't. They don't end up circulating in the system. You, no. If you fail, you just don't fail. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's oh, quite. It's done. quite harsh. <laughs> but uh, you know, it's 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 it's, it's foolproof and it's you know it's it's, it's tight. You don't have people drifting around constantly, you know, repeating first year four or five times. Yeah. Um, okay. um, now I don't know how this would work in a, you know, it's a more just system or whatever. You know, it gives a lot of. Um, but is this how all their modules operate? Not just I the English one. I don't know. Right. This, this is how English works. Mm -hmm. English, not as part of it, not as you know, concentrated. We are English, yeah. but as the, the supplement to their other disciplines. Um, okay. So the class I observed was on uh, criminal procedure. I won't go into that too much because you know, it's sort of part of my teaching, but not necessarily interesting to anybody else. Um, what was interesting was the writing tasks that they were given at the end of a one and a half hour class. Um, because they were basically encouraged to use Google Docs for their writing task. And this was projected onto the screen at the front of the class at the time that they were writing. So groups of students would work on a laptop in different parts of the room. And while they're writing, what they're writing, what they're creating is being projected at the same time. So people can comment from different parts of the classroom, different groups. You know, you've got four or five texts developing before our eyes. The teacher doesn't have to go around and circulate, the teacher just sits you know, wherever she wants uh, and observes the screen and can give feedback to different groups from the sort of central cockpit um, position and the students can see what their peers are doing all at the same time. And <coughs> do we use, are we familiar with Google Docs? It's, I think it's basically cloud-based, um, say, you know, it's, it's saved in some virtual space out there. Mm -hmm. um, and can be accessed from anywhere, anytime. Um, I won't go into it, but uh, if, if you're interested, in the, if you're interested, in the, the link is there, and I'll see, make the PowerPoint available. Um, so yes, as the students work, they, their work was being projected onto the main screen, so everyone could see. So no one could be ashamed. You know, <coughs> space for them to be ashamed of making tons of errors. You know, if one group is particularly weak, a stronger group might be able to help them out, uh, and so on. Okay, so they can see their writing developing before their eyes. Um, Okay. Um, the following morning I observed another class, it was a different level, it was the uh, second semester level, so it was the, you know, the first half really of their English instruction. So the students were between uh, B1 and B2, and it was about revising um, criminal, well, going over criminal law and looking at tort, so I'm going to the topic too much. Um, but here again, the interesting thing was when they were given a task to do, and Prezi, in fact, came into play here, uh, because the students have, had to do a brainstorm. They were given cutouts of photocopies on some aspect of taught law, and they had to do their research kind of together, and look in an encyclopedia, look in legal dictionaries, and look in more textbooks, uh, and so on, and put together a five to eight minute mini presentation in the class. You know, they didn't go home, have lunch or anything like that. They did the research <coughs> in class, brainstorming, reading text, and putting together either a PowerPoint or, um, in some cases, uh, a Prezi presentation. Or there were those who were not digital natives. Uh, they were digital cave people, I suppose. <laughs> and they used big sheets of paper, and they did up their Prezi formatted type of thing on a piece of paper, you know, the old, old style. But um, so the most impressive ones were, in fact, from Prezi, and that's where I met Prezi for the first time. Um, and so I went to explore on Prezi, and I found that yes, you can convert uh, a PowerPoint into a, a, you know, a nice kind of mind map Prezi type presentation. You can click on um, something or other, in Prezi, and basically uh, go through your own PowerPoint presentations, import it into Prezi, and then drag and drop into the different places you want. So you saw Madeline's where it was all set out nicely. You can get your line of PowerPoint slides here on the right, and then you can drag and drop them into different places. Okay? And I did that without signing up, without paying anything, just, um, just opening an account and um, I think basically you can get it for free as much as you want, as long as you 
agree that it will be public. Okay? Whereas if, if you pay and have a proper subscription, it's private and you can download and save your own things and nobody else can access them. Yeah? Um, so yes, it, it, it has some lovely um, benefits and in particular for these you know, very short, sweet student presentations where they brainstorm and then give an immediate mini presentation. Press it was a really good uh, platform uh, for them to use. Um, there's a very nice video demo, in fact, but we won't look at that, uh, on, on how to get started using in Prezi. Okay? Uh, and then there's like tutorials, workshops on how to import your PowerPoint and so on. So I found that very useful. Um, clearly I didn't use it here. Um, Wednesday afternoon, just briefly, I went to um, a research <coughs> workshop on uh, this task-based teaching and learning with a colleague from Humboldt University Berlin, who happened to be on Erasmus, teaching Erasmus there uh, as well, at the same uh, time. So, um, what I found most interesting for this context there was uh, his presentation on academic discussions. It's a task-based work that he gives to his students. Um, he sends them off to research a particular topic, finding this topic on any of these um, current affairs or topical uh, topical um, subjects um, websites. Okay, so procon.org, debatepedia, uh, idebate.org. You can find uh, very nice short articles on all sorts of uh, you know current affairs, like from uh, uh, drinking alcohol during pregnancy, um, adoption rights for gay couples, or um, you know, the growth of the automobile industry. Um, you know, all these topics which constantly come into our, our syllabus, uh, and we have articles and questions and debates and so on. You can find very brief, very nice articles and send the students off to do their own research and put together their own uh, material um, through these websites, and then come back and discuss in class. Okay, so a bit less, a bit more proactive type activity. Um, <coughs> in fact, he is Matt Hughes is performing some research on this topic, and, and currently some of the findings have been that uh, there's a 16% reuse of new language when you send them off to do their own research and find their own material. Fewer mistakes, broader range, better flow, interaction, improved motivation, autonomy, self-awareness, critical thinking, and so on. Okay, so these are some of the findings uh, when the students are just pushed to go a bit further uh, and be a bit more proactive in looking for the material themselves on, on the internet, on these sort of debate sites, rather than just giving them a, an A4 page. Um, I won't go into this. I was given a very nice um, CD-ROM on oral presentations, so the techniques of oral presentation, I mean, we might talk about that in the context of, you know, one-to-one -one or something later on, if anyone's interested, um, and interested I could show them. But basically, we've, we've, we've got videos of students at different levels discussing different topics um, and, you know, highlighting their faults. And, and their, it's an interactive uh, CD-ROM for students, in fact, it's for self-study, so they can watch these videos of their peers presenting, they can go through multiple choice questions and you know, what this person did wrong and, and so on and so forth. And that was put together by Igor uh, Stepane. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, yeah, so I won't go into that too much. Shall we have a look if we have time? I don't think we have time. Um, <laughs> Thursday morning, next day, so I visited the Bohnicha, the, the new campus, visited with uh, our colleague uh, Eva Trompeshova, and met Frank and Susanna, who are our colleagues who are teaching uh, English for medicine and sports science over in this, this place. It was interesting to meet people from, from outside the sphere. Incidentally, the teachers are attached to faculties and departments there. They're not in a, a CIDLG. They, they have their hub, which is the, the Massive University Language Centre, but um, they have their offices and all their activities are based in their faculty. So the teachers in the law faculty 
has their offices and everything they do is in the <coughs> medicine, same thing, economics, same thing, okay? Even if there are three or four kilometers between each faculty, each campus, that's where they are. So they rarely, in fact, go back to, you know, their prefab. <laughs> they don't have a prefab, they have a very nice historic building. This is historic as well. This is historic. <laughs> you took the words out of my mouth. Okay. Um, I won't go into that, but you know, I have a few observations in relation to um, this faculty. The architecture is very interesting, it's like an airport. Uh, and it's connected by a bridge or a pastel. Um, to a shopping centre. Mm -hmm. so it's, it's really like this very kind of utopian blending of uh, commercial, educational, practical, functional, uh, and then you've got kind of motorways on <laughs> it too. So it's like very futuristic. I mean, it has its own benefits, but it's difficult to go there by bicycle. Oh, I have a look at that. Yeah. So you can. Um, you can. Um, Take a virtual tour here. Again, I don't think we have time. It's no. probably, you know, we don't really have time now, but you know, I'll, I'll make it available for so those who really want to have a look around. Um, I put the PowerPoint on the week. Yeah, that's a good idea. So, Thursday afternoon, what did I do? Erasmus in the community, uh, South Czech Public Nursery Schools and Adult Class. Um, adult Evening Class, that is, for a class for adults. Um, Terry, stop laughing. <laughs> Um, so we went and sang songs and drew pictures and did mime and things like that for two uh, Matesha Shkola, which is um, they call that in this, um, set in rural villages in South Moravia. And I, I recorded uh, with my MP3 dictaphone thing. Not your uh, flip camera? No, I didn't have oh. uh, No, I brought what you had provided me. <laughs> um, but it's not on the computer, so you can't hear them singing red, pink, yellow, oh, da, 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 da. but it was very nice. Yeah? Um, and the observation that I made was that, gosh, at this level, and this is probably universal, yes, task based teaching and learning is like, it's just child's play, it's what's, what's done, I mean, at that level, we all do task based teaching and learning. It's all about colour, drawing a colour, yeah, okay, so. Um, you know, going from the very academic seminar the day before to uh, nursery school and seeing it in practice the day after, it, it, was, uh, it was interesting. Um, okay, the evening class was a three-hour marathon grouping of one-to-one -one students with our colleague Eva Tompeshova takes a lot of one-to-one -one, uh, classes in, in the community and so she basically got them all together because I was going. <laughs> and, and sat me in a room for three hours with all her students. Fortunately, they all brought wine, food, schnapps, homemade cakes, uh, poppy seed rolls, and so on, all the local products. And so it was painless. You know, I sat there for three hours talking in English, occasionally writing something on the whiteboard, and drinking it. Yeah. Um, finally, this is why I really went. It, it all came together on the, the last morning. Uh, six hours of teaching in a row to students of economics <coughs> in the Faculty of Economics. This is where I co-taught with Eva uh, Tomeshova, um, second year students of English for economics. Um, incidentally, um, we love our Solvay, but uh, the, the Master University Faculty of Economics is considered to be the top school of economics in the Czech Republic, whilst Masaryk University is the second oldest Czech university after the Charles Fourth University in Prague, 1978. Irrelevant, but we're right <laughs> <laughs> um, Observations on the co-teaching, what were the benefits? Well, I've never co-taught before, in fact, I felt quite intimidated by the idea. I mean, I love to teach a group of students with the door closed, and then the dynamics all take off. Uh, I don't like talking in front of a group of peers like that, or colleagues, that's frightening. <laughs> Students are not frightening. <coughs> Co-teaching was frightening, but only for the first minute or two. Um, and then the benefits were immediately evident. Uh, we also had a lovely interactive whiteboard. An interactive whiteboard that you could tap, and it does what your computer is supposed to do. You can write on it with a kind of magnetic type pen, scroll up and down, and uh, gosh, wow, talk to it and, you know. Uh, we have some have got that as well. Yeah, primary schools in the UK. <laughs> so, uh, we have one here if you want. 
Right, okay. Well, this, this, this is the standard in the whole of the faculty of economics there. So, so most of the teachers are used to using it every day. Um, and, you know, I got a bit confused, and my colleague, she wrote on it with the, the marker pen. Uh, she got a bit flustered, but, you know. And you wanted to use chalk? You want to use chalk, yeah. Um, but, yeah, you know, that's quite exciting. Um, but what about co-teaching? Well, you've got an in-class support there all the time with you, someone who can give you technical support, grammar, terminology. Also a volunteer if you need to demonstrate something in front of the student. You know, can I have a volunteer? No one puts their hand up, so you've got your co-teacher. Um, <laughs> also someone to bounce ideas off in front of the students, so the students see thoughts developing between you. Um, and to act a bit, to improvise and, and fool around. You can have a goodie, you can have a baddie, you know, like a really nasty one. And, uh, and she can be the, the friendly one, and that animates students. These are all, all things that animate the students. There's also someone who can pick up the slack when you're a bit worn out, when an activity has run its course and it's going to change. Uh, someone who can step in when things get stuck, so most students aren't asking questions, so the person can do something. You know, like, do a dance or whatever. <laughs> um, and then when one task changes, you know, rather than wasting a minute or two saying, okay, we'll do the listening now, and you know, I take two minutes to open the CD and put it in and turn it on and speak over, blah, 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 that person steps in immediately and you do all that fiddling around when they're doing their task and then you do your task because there's no time lost, time wasted, uh, and uh, no kind of, you know, dead gaps uh, in the class. Um, and just finally, in general, the buzz is greater when you've got two people presenting. Uh, student involvement satisfaction is, is, is more tangible with a lively duo. And also, very important, because I had six hours in a row, the teacher fatigue is less crushing after two, four, six hours teaching non-stop. So I don't know how if one could ever integrate that. <laughs> The student-teacher ratio is... Yeah. <laughs> we can afford that, to have two teachers. Who can afford it? Yeah, I mean, it's not something they do all the time, but they do it occasionally. I guess, what do you do? You, you double the size of the group, or you, you, you reduce the number of hours that the students have? You have one-hour courses with two teachers, rather than two-hour courses with one teacher. I don't know. Uh, I think there's the space to be played around with here. Because um, I did see you know, immediate results. Anyway. Um, okay, well I won't go into that. That was some lesson material that I prepared in advance. And it was basically a bit of what I teach in law, a bit of what we teach in, in Solve, uh, Angie Trois in particular, business ethics and so on. So introduction to cultural awareness in business, management and marketing. Uh, we did the quiz, you know, the quiz you use uh, on cultural awareness, the PowerPoint quiz. Um, and I gave them some further reading and viewing, for example, the um, um, and the concluding activity of text on, on globalization, which was relative to law and business. Okay? Uh, we didn't have time to do all that, so we just did the first two, and I gave the rest of his homework. Of course, I didn't have to mark it, and I wasn't going back. He's very nice. Okay, finally then, on Friday afternoon, I had uh, a visit to this uh, very nice villa, <laughs> very impressive. Um, the website is there if you want to have a look, if you're ever going to Brno, it's well worth a visit. Um, and you'll be able to read all this in the PowerPoint as well, some of the details about the history of this villa and why it's important uh, and why it was made a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Um, and then in the evening, on day five, uh, <laughs> after all that strain and stress, oh, and, uh, I was taken to a very typical, uh, frequently held event, folk, and, folk music and dance, folk music and costume and everything is a big part of South Czech Republic life. Um, and the wine, of course, as well. So here I am trying out the traditional musical instrument, the dosma. That's the definition of it. And there we are. It's one of those... Um, you're a language teacher, right? <laughs> it's like a big table in front of you, you know? David, that. remember we, one we, image, one concept. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And do you just... With, do you, do you just string, bang on it? Oh. Hammers, uh -huh. which have a soft tip. 
Okay? Oh. It's, it's a musical instrument that was brought into Europe in about 1300s from Persia and it has spread to very central Eastern European countries and most folk communities have a, an instrument, Something a variation like, yeah. of this musical instrument. It's, it's like a, a flat harp really that you yeah. hear. Yeah, you can hear it in the metro in Brussels. Yes. Yeah, 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 sometimes, yeah, yeah. I mean, in, in India, Indian music, yeah, Iranian music, you, you have an instrument in. like this. And here it's used with, you know, violin, a cello, a trumpet, as part of the kind of okay. South, South Czech public. Did you manage to make yeah. any music? Well, again, I have a little video, but it's on my computer, not here. And uh, you can't hear anything because you can just hear people like warbling and, and, no. and, and screeching in the background because they're all like. They've had um, 120 glasses of wine. Okay. <laughs> Literally, yeah. Folk music and dance, <coughs> costumes, wine tasting, some 120 plus locally produced wines in thimble sized doses. We were ushered into this great hall, all along one side, tables, and just hundreds oh of wines through from white, rose, red. Oh. And you're given a glass, you pay six euro at the door. You're given a tiny, tiny glass, and you, you know, keep it in your pocket. And you, know, you, you have to select the wines and work your way through. And uh, if you want, you can, you, know, you can write down critical uh, <laughs> feedback, <laughs> or you can just you know, just advise. Um, so yes, Czech Republic makes a lot of wine, uh, like Germany, Austria, <laughs> Hungary, and Romania. They sell them exported. You won't go to Carrefour and find Czech wine. On the shelves, um, they like to drink, keep it and drink it at home. Um, so the folk evening event concluded my visit to Britain Art and the Czech Republic. But just some final concluding uh, observations. So you know, what were the benefits? I had to do a feedback report for the European Commission. <laughs> <laughs> didn't put too much about the wine. Anyway, so co-teaching, classroom management methods, pre-testing collaborations is an area that, if we're interested. Uh, Master would be interested in, you know, sending us draft versions of their exams, and we could do the same, and giving each other feedback on an assessment, kind of harmonising assessment <coughs> across uh, different European universities in in one discipline. Um, video conferencing, we can take ideas from that. We can set one up if if we're interested. Three B connection, uh, this is something else that was proposed in the wine evening actually. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not Brussels and Berlin. We could have the other no. We could have like a you know a three yeah. G three D three B um, outreach Erasmus in the community. There's clearly added value there. Uh, soft skills. Um, well, every aspect of the exchange did something for soft skills. And generally resource sharing, best practice exchange, methodology advice, health stuff and and so on. Um, so what was the, what are the European uh, people seeking when they fund um, teaching mobility exchange? Well, benefits and added value for the individual, benefits and added value for the host institu institution. Uh, clearly I was able to bring something from Solve, from Faculty of Law, uh, the teaching methods and how we work here to them. Um, benefits and added value for the sending institution. So, what have I brought back? Anything? <laughs> <laughs> have you seen the improvement? <laughs> yes, <laughs> we have. Okay, and uh, and then benefits and added value uh, in terms of outreach and the community. Okay, so. Um, so we could. You know, work towards setting up a video conferencing suite if we're interested. We could work towards a, a longer term program where we have a rotation of teachers with different language uh, modules in the CIDLB going to mm -hmm. each year uh, and doing the exchange. Okay, there's the scope for us to, to work on and, and build and improve this Erasmus exchange, which is a once off for now. Okay, but it should become something a bit more permanent later on. Bye bye.